So let's come to the next color palette. And now that is a very big color palette called the complementary colors. Now what it is about complementary color schemes is we are moving from monochromatic which was same color, uh, hues, uh, tones, tints and um, shades to analogous which were close neighbors and now we are going to opposites. So a huge contrast is what is awaiting. So that are complementary colors. So let's look at the color wheel again here. We have the yellow opposite the purple, we have the orange opposite the blue, we have the green opposite the red. Now this means if I am wearing an orange top, my blue trouser is going to be the maximum contrast I can create in my styling. So if you want a person to look at your top and your bottom and not as a flow as in monochromatic color scheme, use a complementary color scheme. So let's have a look at what does complementary color scheme look like when they are bundled together. So here, these are two very interesting pictures. Here I have put the red and the green together the orange and the blue together and the yellow and the violet together but in different proportions. Why do we do that? Remember we talked of color balancing? Every color has a weight. Deeper colors have more weight but when they have more weight we use them more and the brighter colors need to be used less just like salt to food. So here red and green are almost similar intensity in this picture so they are half. Whereas we use a little of orange to the blue that's given and that bright yellow, a little pinch of bright yellow to that wolf. So this is how we balance color. But in the picture you see that Naomi is wearing a lot of yellow because her background is of a very deep blue. So her 75% background is of blue so she is able to wear a yellow in this picture. So it's a beautifully done picture and color balanced. Let's have a look at these, another example of two complementary colors, yellow and mauve. Uh, look at the percentage of mauve used uh, behind the model so that the model's yellow outfit can be sort of balanced. Whereas in the uh, sandal, uh, we have a lot of yellow and it comes and hits the eye, but maybe that's the purpose of the brand. Few more examples of orange and blue, and we always use a little lesser of orange and more of blue because of its depth and orange being too bright and vibrant. So there's always a 70-30 ratio happening with bright colors. Uh, but I have an example to share with you. In this blue and orange, they're almost balanced because of the tones that are used. They are muted. You could use them 50-50. Now this is a very interesting picture of red and greens. Very well balanced, we need a little tinge of the bright red. Remember the 2 is to 5 and 3 is to 5 ratio. And the 3 is to 5 is the green. And we need to use more of green, which is deeper, darker, to balance out the bright red. Now, coming to three different families of complementary colors, it's just a way to understand. You right now were just understanding the pair opposite the color wheel. We are making them into groups of three, calling it the triad. We are putting into the groups of four, calling it a tetradic. So uh, again, they will um, be contrasting each other, not as high, but yes, the contrast will be there. So let's look at the color wheel and see so many triads there. We've already discussed primary colors, secondary colors, equally distant on the color wheel. So three colors equally distant are a triad. And there are more examples. So to make complementary colors more interesting, we have grouped them. A pair, we call them direct complementary. Three together equidistant, we call them a triad. And there is a split complementary where one uh, color is on the one side of the color wheel and two are on the opposite. So let me share some examples with you. This is our primary colors together. Very well done in the book. This of course is a pair. And just look at the grouping here of triad colors. We use them in accessories. One color is the dominant green dress. She has a, a stole in uh, mauve and she has a handbag uh, in orange. So we could put them up in different proportions. Always remember, let the deeper color be more. Let the bright colors be accent and secondary support colors. Another very interesting which we just discussed was split complementary. So this visual is to show you how we work with split complementary. Two colors on one side and the opposite color on the other side. 
and they have less of a contrast and make more interesting composition. Used extensively interior design, prints, rather split complementary, create more interest than the analogous and are less contrasting than the triads. So they are a very comfortable zone to be in. With this, we come to the end of this episode about color schemes. I know I've shared a lot of information and there's a lot of information to take in. So I would recommend that you see these videos again and again. Support yourself with videos on color theory done by many other people passionately and add to this video. So like, subscribe, share how you liked what I shared about color schemes in this video. And in our next one, we are going to talk about how neutral colors the black, white and grey add to the colourful colour palette that you have and what is their impact on your clothing. We'll also discuss palettes. So before I leave, as usual, I'll leave you with a thought. Last time, I asked, what defines you? Who am I? How do you define yourself? Does your failure define you? Does your successes define you? Does what your parents say define you or your siblings say or your best friends say define you? I think none of that. What defines you is what you choose to be defined by. If you choose to be a diamond, that's your definition. So why would I, would choose, why would I choose to be someone who's defined by failure? I could choose to be someone defined by sparkle. So, define yourself and that's who you are. Bye for now. <laughs>